One of the challenges you have to deal with when you have a greenhouse is bugs. So while you're very busy making your environment inside your greenhouse gorgeous for your plants and flowers, the right temperature, the right amount of humidity, guess what? Bugs are loving that too. The plant right beside my head is the Diplodenia. Kind of looks like Amanda Villa and the flowers look really similar. Well, I came into my greenhouse this morning and I had some really, really awful looking orange bugs. These orange babies are on the stems of my plant all over the place. And this is the second time I've seen them. Now Google is magnificent because you could look up what are these orange bugs that are on my plants and specify what they look like. Well, I found out these are orange aphids. Aphids do come in a variety of, I guess, sizes and colors, I don't know. I had aphids before on my crepe myrtle trees. They were entirely different. They left behind like a black soot on all the leaves. I was able to use regular Dawn dish soap and water combination, sprayed the leaves down and tried to keep the soot and the aphids from being on that plant any longer. Well, these orange ones are kind of more gross because I can see them and they're ugh. But anyway, the Dawn dishwashing liquid and water combination is supposed to be something that still will help, which I did already do. My leaf loss was not horrible at the time because I guess the aphids weren't on there for very long. However, it was not a lasting effect. I have my plant inside my greenhouse right now and I gotta get these things off before I do have more leaf loss. You could use a wet paper towel and really just get a handful of these little bugs on your paper towel and they're pretty easy to get off. But again, if that's not lasting, this neem oil is what they suggest as something else you can actually spray on the plant to get rid of your aphid. So let's go for that. I mixed up my neem oil solution. So this is just water with the proper amount of neem oil mixed into it. So this way I have a squirt bottle. I'm gonna go ahead and spray where all those bugs are. One of the other bugs I have in here right now are mealy bugs. They are on my hibiscus. Hibiscus is a little bit more of a sensitive plant, but neem oil can still be recommended for them. However, they recommend you test before you go ahead and spray the whole thing down. So I have four hibiscus plants in my greenhouse. I'm going to experiment on one of them with neem oil and see if it gets rid of those mealy bugs. They are tiny little white specks, but they're gonna like suck all the nectar out of the leaves and right around the bud of the flower and everything. We do not want those babies to kill our hibiscus. It's recommended that you use neem oil every seven days and not before the seven days are up. So it has now been eight days since I sprayed my orange aphids, but they're back. Not only am I having a problem with the orange aphids, I now have black specks underneath my elephant ears. I'm not sure what they are. They could be mealybugs, they could be black aphids, they could be black mites. So now I have to treat that as well. They happen to be in the same, same pot. Let's see, I'll show you. This is the Diplodenia, but in the same spot or in the same pot, I have the elephant ears. And you can see all underneath I now have these. So as you can see, the big orange bugs that are moving are just new ones that have come to life. As I was checking my plant over time this week, I saw little tiny yellow specks that stopped moving and I think those are the ones that died, but now I have more. Now look at what I found under here. Gross. Orange aphid update, nearly two weeks later, I have sprayed neem oil two times. The problem is not going away. So neem oil is not the solution. So what I'm doing now is taking my plant outside of the greenhouse, washing the whole thing down. I'm getting all the aphids off, that at least that I can see. I am also going to be changing out the potting soil because if the bugs are living inside the soil, that could be a problem. So that's it. This entire plant's getting a bath and hopefully that also helps with whatever is on top of my elephant ear. So here we go.
I just wanted to give you a final update on the Diplodania and the orange aphids. Sadly, the plant did not make it. After the neem oil and the bath and got rid of all the bugs that I could see, changing the potting soil and everything, the leaf loss just was continual and then the plant finally seemed to kick the bucket. So I cut it all back. It's not entirely devastating because technically I think the plant was supposed to be an annual anyway. Still, I don't really like to lose anything, but that's the update on that. And the elephant ears are not fully gone, done with their mites. However, they got pretty sorry looking and it was actually because of the temperature in the greenhouse. Even though it's technically winter, or very early spring. The temperatures can get very, very hot some days, and I'm still trying to regulate that inside the greenhouse. So some of the plants that are a little bit more cold hardy and you know are annuals in my or are perennials in my area have a little more difficulty with that baking heat. Not so worried about the elephant ears though because they propagate easily, so it's gonna be just fine to make new plants of those. Then of course I have my lovely hibiscus, which still amaze me all the time. And they keep blooming and blooming despite the fact that I can't get rid of the stinking bugs on the flowers. I keep washing them off, but they keep coming back. So we're having a little struggle there, but the babies are still blooming and bringing tons of joy. So that's what we got. Having a greenhouse can be a lot of work, what with dealing with the pests and the bugs and all the things you may have inside, but it's still overwhelmingly worth it to watch these things grow and to be able to propagate things and not have to worry so much about the weather.